All right, guys, so we got a bit of a different project for you today. I don't know if you're like me, I have a lot of keys. And my problem is I used to use the carabiners to clip them on and off, and it would tear my belt loops off. That was the biggest thing to get snagged, that it ripped my belt loops off. So I came up with a bit of a solution, and um, I like it. I've seen other people do it, and I wanted to make one for myself. So today we're going to make a keychain leather wrap that goes around your belt and not your belt loops. Hey, my name is Joe. Welcome to Shepherd's Workbench. So the first thing we're gonna need is a strap cutter. Now, you don't have to have a strap cutter. You could use um, just a straight edge and a long, really like a really sharp knife. Um, but since I have it, I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna use, do probably about an inch and a quarter strip. So you can see we kind of set our, from our blade to the inside of this is an inch and a quarter. And here I have a five ounce veg tan leather. Um, it's gonna be super strong and sturdy and super durable and it's gonna last to the, up to time. Um, but we're also gonna do a little decorative feature and do some tooling on it. So what we'll do is you slip it in the top here of our strap cutter and push it down on the blade so you can get it started. Once it's started, just kind of pull it through. Now we probably only need about that much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my razor blade here and I'm gonna cut it off right there. Set that to the side. So now that we've got this piece, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna flip this over. We'll add a button there, snap there and then we will have it like this so it flips over your belt onto your keys. So we kinda gotta start planning out just a little bit how we're gonna do this. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna square up one end. So we've got this here. I'm using just my lines on my grid here. Cut that pretty square. Okay, so we wanna kinda figure out how why do we need this? I'm gonna say probably about a three inch overlap. So if we have this come up here, so we wanna have room for our button right about like that. I'm gonna crease it over and then have it flip like this. So that's what's eventually gonna be like that. So um, let me uh, get some tools and uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, so we got our strap set up here. And we kind of have already creased it because I know that that's where I want my button. And then this is where we're going to have our key ring going through. So the first thing I want to do is kind of score this line. Get it, make sure it's nice and line, line there. I'm going to score this line and I have this tool here. Now this is just a V groove um, tool. And all it does is it kind of lowers the blade here. It lowers this little blade. And then it cuts a V out of the leather on that spot. And what that does is it allows that leather to crease over. I think I'm a little too deep there. It allows that leather to crease over nice and easy. And uh, take just remove some of that to uh, allow for that leather to fold. So you see, we cut that little groove there. So that just kind of helps it to fold over a lot easier. So we got our groove cut and uh, we got it to fold over nicely. All right, so we got it all set up here. We got our groove cut. Um, so now we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put our hole for our snap. Um, now I have this antique brass um, snap. It's from Tandy. Um, super good quality. I really highly recommend Tandy anything. Um, to where that this leather came from. Um, this is a double shoulder. Uh, I got I think I got I got it on sale for like 40 bucks, five ounces. Um, so it's really great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out where our hole is going to go. 
So I want it relatively centered uh, right about there. I want to leave some room because we're going to cut these corners off to account for our ring there. Um, so yeah, I like the placement there. So we'll take our awl and just kind of mark our hole. Get it back set where we want it. And that looks just about center. Let me move it over just a tad. Okay. So then, most people have one of these sitting around their garage because they like to punch extra holes in their belt loops. Um, but this is a great tool. If you don't have anything else, this will work perfectly fine. Um, so I like to take my rivet, you can kind of see it here, and I like to fit it in that hole so I know what size I'm going to need. So we'll turn it to that size, we'll punch our hole right about there, give it a good twist, we got a nice clean hole. So now we've got that, we're going to fold it back over, take our awl, mark out where it is on the other side, you can kind of see it there. Punch that, give it a good twist. So now that we've kind of got that set, what I want to do is I want to take some contact adhesive. So this is by DAP, it's just contact cement. Um, I like these little cans because they have the brush inside of them. Um, I don't usually buy the bigger cans like you see a lot of other leather work guys do because I just um, don't use enough to really warrant keeping the big cans around. So what you want to do is I have a, a well ventilated area um, but then you are going to just rub it on both sides. All right we'll give that a couple minutes to dry and we'll uh, we'll come back. Okay so we give it some time to dry it's just getting tacky. So what we're going to do is bend it over, line up our holes, and press it together. And now we've got a good bond. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll take my key ring here and kind of just see where I want it to lie. I know it's going to go on that ring so we'll say about there, there. That looks good to me. And I want it to be, it's going to bevel up to there. So what I did is I marked the top of where our bevel is going to go, like this. And then I marked the parts of our key ring here. So what we're going to do is take a really nice sharp blade. I'm actually going to change that blade out for a new one. And then we want to just cut our line here. Connecting the two endpoints we made earlier. Just like that. So now we've got that, we're going to take an edge beveler. So this is what's going to do is just take off all the burrs, take off the sharp edge so it'll be easier when we burnish it um, to give it that nice rounded finish to it. And all this is is just goes along the edge here. So I'll come close here for you. So you can see uh, here is where it's beveled and here is where it's not. It just makes it easier to burnish over.
All right, so next, now that we've got this figured out, we're gonna round our corner, our corners right here. So what I wanna do is I kinda wanna find, I got these little things from the hobby store. They're super great. But just kinda find something that's gonna look good. I'm gonna use a three quarter inch hole here. And we will have to rebevel our edges once we cut this, but line up the outside and just kind of round those corners over. So this just scratches it in so we can see it. Now the best way that I've found to, cu to cut corners or to cut the rounds is just do it in three or four pot passes. So the first one, you're just cutting a flat part of it like that. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So you can see I just cut that one stripe. All right, so we got around our corners. Next, we're gonna do our V groove for this top slat here. So I'm gonna do is fold it in half, take our awl, stick it in there where it's bent, and just scratch it. This just gives me a good line, a reference line, to be able to use our groove cutter. Now this one I want to be a little bit deeper than the other one because I want it to fold over my belt super nicely. And you can see what I did there is I cut my first groove, I went to the left just a quarter, like an eighth of an inch, did another pass, went to the other side of that line, did another pass. So I did three passes total, but that allows it to fold over real nicely and keep its shape. So now let's mark our hole for our other snap. I'm just gonna press like that. So now we see where our hole's gonna go. Take our punches again. Punch that hole out, just like that. And look, they line up perfect. So next we are gonna do our wet or our stamp. For our stamp, I wanna use this Harley Davidson Eagle Wings. Um, I ride a Harley with my father-in-law, uh, so I tend to like it. So I wanna incorporate it into my key ring. So we're just gonna wet our leather. This is just a regular water spray bottle. Um, wet our leather and kind of decide where we want it. So I know my V groove is right here. So I want it to come just below that V groove, but stay above the button and stay center, like right there. And that's stamped in really nicely you can see so our stamps a little wet but we're gonna keep going anyway we're gonna do Freiburg's light brown pro dye but we're also gonna finish it with our dark brown antique finish that just gives it a cool look to it um, you'll see once we put it on there what it looks like so just open it up put our dauber in and just kind of saturate the leather. We'll do it, come over it two or three times just to get rid of some of the streakiness. And as it dries, it will lighten up. So you'll see it looks really dark now, but it will lighten up over time as you let the dye kind of soak in. So we'll set that aside, let it dry for a little while. Okay, so we let it dry overnight. You can see it's still got some dark spots in it, which that's okay, it does lighten up over time. So we're gonna take our dark brown antique finish, and it's just essentially this paste. You kind of get a little bit on your finger, that's probably way too much. And we're just kind of gonna rub it all over it. Kind of get it down in the grooves, especially where the stamp is. Make sure you get good, even coverage all around. 
And then we'll take our towel here. And we'll wipe that off. Now as the light brown part starts to dry and lighten up, the dark brown will stay in that stamp there. And it'll highlight it really, really nicely. If you want to see how this looks in a couple weeks, I will post a picture on my Instagram page. Um, so be looking for that. So I like to use this tokenol oil or cream. It's a burnishing compound. It gives it a really nice edge. Um, so again, what you do is take a little bit on your finger and kind of run it along your edge here. I'm going to grab a burnishing tool. Alright, so we got our burnishing tool here, and once we got that oil on there, we're just going to kind of slick it here, just like this. I need a little bit more right there. And what that does, as you can see, it gives it a really nice, like, polished edge. So if you look, this is the unburnished side, and this is the burnished side. Now that we got our burnished edges, our dye, and our finish on it, let's add our snap on here. So we've got the decorative end. That's going to go on the outside here. You can see how pretty that's going to look with that brown color and that, that uh, aged, aged bronze. So we've got our, our snap setting tools here. All right, so this is a rivet setting tool, our snap setting tool, rivet setting tool, whatever. It's got these dished cups on the inside here, and that just basically put, lets you put your snap in without it denting or damaging the back of it like it would on a flat surface. So on the top portion, it gets this little cup. This little cup end goes on the top here. So we're going to take our smaller rounded end, and that's just going to curl over the edges of that pin. So if you look here closely, you can see that pin here. And what we're going to do is the small one's going to round over those edges and the big one's going to hammer it down to set that snap in there. So you can see now we've got our edges kind of rolled over like that. Now that they're rolled, you can see the two size differences. So now that they're rolled, oh, let me get to focus. Now that they're rolled, we're going to take our bigger end and press it down. Well, it definitely ain't pretty, but it's going to work. So now we're going to do this with the other side. Now this, for this one, we have to use the flat side because this is a flat piece here. So we use our flat side here, get the post in and through, and take the little dish end here. That end of our snap, you can see the post in there. We're going to hammer that down. That one looked real pretty. So you can see it kind of presses it out and gets it to where it's locked on there. Good and solid. Okay. And with that, let's add it to our keys. So then how this would work is we left that little opening there. So you just take your little ring, pull that open, and slide that in there. And just like that, You've got it to your key ring.